Today we're pinning the sepulchral guard for Warhammer Underworld Shieldspire right after this. Hey everyone, Sam here from the Tabletop Hub, your one-stop shop for all things tabletop, and today I'm going to be attempting to paint the Sepulchral Guard for Shadespire. Now, if you're new to the Tabletop Hub, this series is basically my attempt at painting some minis in the hope that it'll inspire you to pick up a brush and get painting. Now, I wouldn't call myself an experienced mini painter by any means, and my hope is that no matter what skill level you're at, that you watch this video and think, well, if this guy can do it, so can I, damn it, uh, and pick up a brush and go and prove me right, I guess, or wrong. Either way, with that said, let's get stuck in. So to begin with, I actually gave the entire warband an undercoat of Army Painter's Skeleton Bone. You can get this in a primer can. Uh, I would definitely recommend it if you are painting large armies of skeletons. Definitely cuts out some paint time, but basically because the skeleton makes up so much of the miniature, the skeleton bones make up so much of the miniature, uh, this really just saves you a ton of time as opposed to undercoating in black and then going through and painting all of those bones individually. Next, I wanted to get to work painting the cloak and cloth work that are so predominant on these minis. So I took some Army Painter's Crusted Sore, added a little bit of water and gave it a thin coating. I'm trying to water down my paints more at the moment rather than just applying them straight out of the bottle. And although you'll find you need to add an extra coat of paint or two, it really does help give you a nice, even, streak-free look. Next, I took Army Painter's Oak Brown and painted the shields that any of the troops had that looked like they were made out of wood. Uh, I equally used Oak Brown to coat the straps of the minis and the spear or pike shaft that the main hero skeleton wields as well. For the main face of the shield that the, the main hero miniature has, uh, I basically just used uh, gunmetal, Army Painter's gunmetal, to paint that in. Now at the moment I'm trying to experiment a little more with non-metallic metals, or NMM. It's something I dabbled with when I painted my Super Mutant for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. You can actually check that painting guide out in the annotation in the top right, but I wanted to do the same thing here that I did with the kind of rusted metal on the Super Mutant, uh, especially here on the breastplate of the Skeletal Guard. Now the shields of the minis I did still paint uh, with gunmetal as I said, but here, because it's so predominant, I actually used Army Painter's Dungeon Grey. Now once that had dried, I then took some Army Painter's Dry Rust Effect Paint and grabbed my stippling brush and just dabbed and scraped the effect paint onto the appropriate areas like the breastplate and the greaves. And once I had gotten the effect paint onto the areas I wanted it on, I then took a dry brush and just brushed these areas down to smooth the effect paint into place and just thin it out a little. I didn't necessarily dry brush, I just kind of moved the paint so that it wasn't clumped up or there wasn't any big build-ups of it. I just kind of smooth, uh, smooth and fade the rust effect uh, over the metal itself. Now for the chainmail on the main hero here, also I, I actually experimented by using Army Painter's Weapon Bronze and then added some gun metal as a top layer just to make it look like the chainmail was a bit more rusted and worn. Uh, for the gun metal I just added a little bit to the tip of my brush and just kind of dabbed it into little areas uh, to make it look like there were patches uh, of metal still there. For the base, I painted the dirt with Army Painter's Dark Stone and then painted any rocks or boulders that were on the bases with Dungeon Grey. Once I had the miniatures painted, I then just went back and tried to cover up any mistakes of where paint had gone where I didn't want it to, uh, and especially repainting some of the bones from where the reds or the rust had accidentally went over them. Once I had done that and tidied them up a little, it was time to add some quick shade. Now it's been a few tutorials since I've used Army Painter's Quick Shade, and while I wouldn't recommend it for high detail minis, in this case with the Sepulchral Guard it seemed to make sense, rather than using a wash. So I got some strong tone Quick Shade and gave the Sepulchral Guard a generous coating, making sure to go back and remove any excess pulls with my brush. Now if you've never used Quick Shade before, it's kind of like a cheater's method of getting easy highlights and shadows while at the same time adding a really great protective coating to your miniatures. 
Now once this had been left to dry for 24 hours, I came back to the minis to add some simple edge highlighting. Now this is something I haven't done on a miniature successfully before, so this was a little daunting, but I took some Army Painters Vampire Red and added this to the highlighted areas of the cloak and cloth work. I didn't want to highlight the entire mini, just in case I completely cocked up one section and, and I just ruined the whole thing. Uh, so this time I chose just to focus on the cloth work and highlight there. And thankfully I can safely say that it came out not too bad uh, and really did add a nice accent to the clothing. So I think that's given me a little bit of a confidence boost uh, to try that more in the future. All that's really left to do now is add some matte varnish to the warband. Uh, maybe add a little bit of grass or some stones to the bases and they'll be ready for the tabletop. But folks, that is it. This is a really simple paint scheme and it gives it a really nice look to the miniatures and I hope you find it helpful. I do have more painting guides on the way, especially there's going to be tons for Fallout Wasteland Warfare and I am going to be working on a Game of Thrones Song of Ice and Fire very soon as well, if I can get working through my backlog. So if you want to be kept up to date with when those videos go live, do be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.